guys. I just decided to put on my bobble bar earrings for my FabFitFun box. Anyways, as you can tell from the title and thumbnail of today's video, I have another oils video for you. I'm going to be talking all about sea buckthorn oil. Sea buckthorn oil is derived from this hardy little shrub, the sea buckthorn shrub, and it's indigenous to temperate zones throughout Europe as well as Asia and some subtropical areas throughout the world as well. And it is rich in fatty acids, not only in the leaves and stems, but also in the berry. And fatty acids are critical in our diet. They play a pivotal role in the health of our cell membranes, as well as in transportation of vitamins and minerals into cells. And they serve as precursors for really important things like bile, bile acids and steroid hormones. So they're really important, so much so that it's recommended that 20% of your energy intake come from lipids to make sure that you get your fatty acids. Fatty acids are also really important for our skin barrier and our skin function. Uh, our skin barrier is made up of lipids, actually, and that is what helps to keep the skin hydrated, healthy, and protect us from the outside world. In rare conditions, something called essential fatty acid deficiency can develop in rare situations. And in those situations, the patients have hallmark skin findings of incredibly dry skin that becomes inflamed and irritated. So that just illustrates how important they are for our skin. Now, sea buckthorn oil has a variety of fatty acids, some of which are otherwise very difficult to find in the plant kingdom. Oil is either obtained from the seeds or the soft parts, like basically the, the fruit. Oil obtained from the seeds is rich in omega-3 and omega-6 fatty acids, whereas oil obtained from the berry, the fruit, the pulp, is rich in omega-7. And omega-7 is otherwise really hard to find in the plant kingdom. So that's something unique about sea buckthorn. All right, so I've been blabbing about how sea buckthorn has all these fatty acids. Well, let's get more into the specifics of which ones. The first one that to me is most notable is palmito oleic acid. This is omega-7 fatty acid. And in the plant kingdom, as I said, this is otherwise very rare. And you know, you really, you really might otherwise struggle to get omega-7 from, from plants. Uh, but it's only found in the berry of sea buckthorn. It's not in the uh, seed or it's not in the uh, stem. However, the devil is in the details in terms of processing. As far as the purity and level of omega-7 that you get out, things like harvesting time, uh, subspecies of plant, and also the origin seem to matter a lot. Uh, for example, uh, sea buckthorn from Central Asia and the Baltic regions is especially high in palmito oleic acid or omega-7 fatty acid, whereas um, maybe other areas of the world less, seems to be less robust. And then there are two subspecies of, of um, sea buckthorn, Sinensis and Ramonoides. Ramonoides seems to have more omega-7 than Sinensis. As with most plant-derived oils and botanic ingredients, there is a dearth of rigorous clinical studies to support the use of, of the ingredient. But in the case of sea buckthorn oil, I'll go through what we do have. In terms of just the, just the omega-7 aspect of it, we have an in vitro study, which means a cell-based study or a laboratory-based study, not on actual people, but rather something that is modeling skin in, in the lab, that shows that palmito oleic acid, not, not sea buckthorn oil, just the palmito oleic acid, just the omega-7, can inhibit some of the processes and enzymes responsible for for hyperpigmentation, suggesting perhaps maybe omega-7 might be something that would be worth looking at on a bigger scale to see if it might be useful for skin brightening. Um, we also have another study though that showed that palmito oleic acid or omega-7 seems to have the ability to portend a decreased risk of candida albicans infection of the skin. And this is really important for chronic wounds. An issue with chronic wounds is sometimes they can be colonized with candida albicans, which if you're not familiar with what that is, it's a yeast 
Uh, it can become colon the wounds can become colonized relatively easily, and that can interfere with wound healing. And we have some laboratory-based studies that suggest that omega-7 may be helpful in decreasing the amount of yeast that can muck up a wound. But again, suggest, not prove. Uh, so it's compelling for perhaps a topical that might be used in chronic wounds. One thing to note is that human sebum, or the oil that we make, sebum does account for sort of a self-disinfecting uh, property on our skin. It has the ability, our oil that we produce, so those of you with oily skin, it's really just natural antibacterial compounds being deposited on the skin. But in some people, sebum is a little skewed to be a little more inflammatory and contribute to acne. Um, but we have studies showing that a uh, topical application of sea buckthorn oil might actually help in serving as a natural antibacterial compound complementing sebum. And it has been shown to have the ability to inhibit growth of pathogenic Staph aureus bacteria, as well as Propionibacteriums or P. acnes, who's been renamed Cutibacterium acnes. If you're not familiar with that, that is a bacteria that is responsible for acne. The next fatty acid is more compelling from a dietary standpoint, and that is oleic acid or omega-9. And that is present in all parts of the plant. And we know from uh, just looking at the Mediterranean diet that consuming oils in the diet that are rich in oleic acid, namely olive oil, it seems to be associated with and portends some health benefits in terms of improvement in cardiovascular disease markers and risk of cardiovascular disease. As far as skin benefit, it's not as helpful. And if it's present in too high a level or used too much, uh, say is in using olive oil on your skin, it actually can worsen transepidermal water loss. It's more of a penetration enhancer. It can be a little disruptive in terms of how, how the lipids lay out in the skin. So it's not as useful, but I mentioned it because it is there. Alpha linoleic acid is really important for cell membranes and for the membrane around our mitochondria, which if you're not familiar with the mitochondria, it's a little it's a little organelle or a little component inside of all of our cells that is the energy powerhouse and it has its own little membrane around it. And alpha linolenic acid is really important for the integrity of that membrane. And it can be found obviously in sea buckthorn oil. Uh, we don't have much in the way of any data looking specifically at the alpha linoleic component in sea buckthorn oil for its utility in skin. But alpha linoleic acid is thought to be really important in membrane function. And we do have a study looking at people with dry eyes who took a dietary supplement of sea buckthorn oil. Uh, they took two grams daily. And they showed an improvement in their uh, dry eyes at the end of the study. And it was thought to be due to the alpha linoleic co component in the sea buckthorn oil supplement. Uh, so that was interesting, but we really don't have much in terms of skin. Uh, to touch on the benefits of the alpha linolenic acid in sea buckthorn oil. The next fatty acid is omega-6, or linoleic acid, LA. And this can be found in both the seeds as well as the pulp or the fruit. Uh, so both types of oil. You know, our skin barrier is comprised of lipids and it is, it is maintained through the synthesis of something called lamellar granules. With age, our ability to kick out those lamellar granules gets a little slow. And therefore, with age, we tend to suffer with dry skin and tend to lose water from our skin more readily. Linoleic acid is a really important player in that lipid skin barrier restoration process. For acne though, omega-6 is really important. Patients with acne have less omega-6 or less linoleic acid and in their sebum, in their oil. And that contributes to acne through, uh, it contributes to plugging up of the pores, formation of comedones, and it also contributes to dry skin and dryness and peeling with acne. Um, so it's thought that linoleic acid, maybe applied topically, it might aid in some of that barrier dysfunction, that lipid skewing, and be helpful for people with acne. But it's not as though we have large clinical studies or any clinical studies really looking at topical application of sea buckthorn oil as a treatment or intervention for acne. We don't have any data showing true decrease in inflammatory lesions or true decrease in plugging up of pores. We just don't have those studies. So it's merely speculative. Everything 
thing that I've talked about up to this point is something called an unsaturated fatty acid, meaning it's got these double bonds and kinks and at room temperature, it's going to be a liquid, it's really fluid. And when you put it onto the skin, it slides in between skin cells, smooths them out, it's an emollient. And sometimes emollients, things that are liquid at room temperature, they don't do such a fantastic job creating an occlusive seal on the skin, uh, meaning a barrier. They don't create a physical barrier as readily as, say, a more occlusive ingredient like petrolatum would. So that's always a limitation that I point out with many oils, particularly those that are high in unsaturated fatty acids. Sea buckthorn oil, though, actually has some saturated fatty acids. It's got palmitic acid as well as stearic acid. Uh, believe it or not, seniensis, the subspecies seniensis, is richer in the saturated fatty acids than raminoides. So while raminoides was killing it with with uh, omega-7, seniensis is better with the saturated fatty acids. Saturated fatty acids are of interest because they can potentially pre uh, prevent some trans epidermal water loss from the skin merely by being an occlusive because they will be solid at room temperature and just create like a waxy surface. So that might be one property of sea buckthorn oil that is worth exploring as an ingredient in topical products. So that's what I can tell you about the bioactive compounds, the fatty acid profile of sea buckthorn oil, where it's compelling, what, what compounds seem most promising within it for putting on your skin and how they might be helpful. But I caution you, as with any botanic ingredient, there's truly a dearth uh, or complete lack of clinical studies looking at topical application of sea buckthorn oil for the treatment of or as an intervention for really anything in the skin, uh, but it's compelling. Um, and as with any plant-derived product though, plant-derived oil, uh, there is a potential for sensitivity and for irritation developing. So they're always a little bit more risky than inert things like mineral oil. Uh, your immune system tends to not like plants as much as, as, much as you might think. Uh, so that's always a risk. Uh, there really aren't any case reports though of problems with topical application of sea buckthorn oil. I've never seen any issues with it. And so it's an ingredient that you might be interested in pursuing because of some of these beneficial theoretical properties that I mentioned in today's video. Some products that I can tell you about uh, are the following. The first that stands out to me as a pretty inexpensive option is going to be the Ordinary Sea Buckthorn Oil. This is from the berry. Their, their oil is just from the berry um, and so it is, you're getting the omega-7s there. So this is a product that maybe uh, you put on underneath your, mo your more occlusive moisturizer. It's more of an emollient with some of these beneficial bio compound, bioactive compounds. There's no, there are no preservatives in this product, however, so you know one issue with the oils is that they can become rancid. Uh, so I always worry about that with oils like this, you know, uh, particularly when there are no preservatives or antioxidants added to stabilize things, that you run the risk of oxidation and degradation of the oil and causing problems. Now, I will point out that because this is an oil derived from the uh, berry, from the fruit, it does have a yellow coloration to it. That does not mean the oil is rancid. That is merely the color of the oil. Um, and so don't be alarmed by that with this product. Another product that you might consider is one I reviewed a long time ago, Stretcha Liquid Gold. This is a moisturizer that has actually both types of sea buckthorn oil in it, the seed oil and the uh, fruit pulp oil. So you get a good mix of the different fatty acids from the plant. And that product also has some more occlusive ingredients in it. So you don't have to worry as much about, about layering it with another moisturizer. And that one, if I recall, also has ceramides in it. Yes, it does. That was one of the things I liked about it. It has ceramides, which when you put those on your skin, it kind of helps clue your skin to get, get its act together in terms of keeping the skin barrier intact. That product was, was okay. You know, it, it, didn't, it wasn't something I repurchased or felt the need to repurchase. And I didn't find that it was necessarily any better than any other moisturizer I've ever used. So I never repurchased it, but I didn't have any problems with it. It's free of added fragrance. So that's worth a try and it's not too expensive. The third product is Peach and Lily's Pure Beam Lux Oil. I get questions about this a fair amount. Uh, this uh, is 39 bucks, which is not cheap. Uh, it has jojoba oil in it, which is another oil that's great for skin. Squalane oil, which is another oil that you know is 
seems to be helpful for skin and skin care. Um, I have videos on jojoba oil and squalane, by the way. And it also has grapeseed oil in it, which is rich in antioxidants. And they add the antioxidant to coferol to this, so that is kind of reassuring in terms of product stability. Um, and then they also add vegetable oil in addition to sea buckthorn oil. So the question with this product is like, how much sea buckthorn oil is actually in there? And is it the fruit or the seed or, you know, hard to know. So they're not super transparent with that, uh, but you know, it's one you may be curious about. It's not one I would, I would buy <laughs> or use. Uh, it seems like it could just be nothing more than vegetable oil, which you know, you walk into the kitchen and slap on your face. Um, and I'm rather than pay 39 bucks for it. The next product is Peter Thomas Roth's Hungarian Thermal Water Mineral Rich Moisturizer. Um, it's expensive, $24 for like 0.67 ounces, really pricey. Uh, but this has sea buckthorn oil in it. Uh, it doesn't say if it's a seed or the berry. They don't disclose that, but it also has a lot of other great ingredients in it. It's got honey in it, which can be antibacterial and is a wonderful humectant. It has ceramides in it. It has Saccharomyces ferment filtrate, which is rich in humectants, uh, very nourishing to the skin barrier. Um, it also has some other plant-derived oils, evening primrose oil, linseed and sunflower oil, as well as apricot kernel oil and peach kernel oil. Kernel oils are not the same as fragrance, um, and they can have some of these fatty acids. So you get a nice balance in this moisturizer of fatty acids, not only from the sea buckthorn oil, but also from some of these other, other bot botanical sources as well. So those are four products that I have personal experience with that I can chit chat with you guys about. I'm not super confident in the peach and lily one, so I don't know that it's necessarily worth plunging down cash for, but it doesn't have any ingredients in it that are necessarily stand out as problematic per se, other than the risk of irritation from using plant-derived oils. The peach and lily one doesn't have any added fragrance, nor does the Peter Thomas Roth product, nor does the Stracha product, nor does the Ordinaries product. Um, the Ordinaries product is, is a very inexpensive and is more transparent in terms of the ingredients, but no antioxidants or anything in there to stabilize the product, so that gives me pause. But So yeah, that's what I can tell you about sea buckthorn oil. Compelling, really. I mean, really rich in a variety of different fatty acids that are definitely going to be helpful for the skin. Always the risk of irritation from using a plant-derived ingredient. Products that I mentioned are some potential ones you may comment below if you guys use sea buckthorn oil in your skincare routine. Uh, what products do you use? I'd love to know more from you all. I always love hearing about what it is that you are trying out and how it goes. Um, but if you like this video, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.